Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. You have arrived at the most obscure and irrelevant Land Cruiser centric YouTube channel. So congratulations. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. If you haven't, please stay a while. What we do on this channel is uh, review auction listings, among other things, but review auction listings of Land Cruisers, specifically these 80s, 100 or 200 series Land Cruisers uh, that are on cars and bids or bring a trailer and so on. And try and evaluate, see if it's a good deal, try and find defects, things that maybe the sellers haven't disclosed, and then also try and you know keep a bead on the market, see if we can either predict where it'll sell and you know, we follow up. So every Saturdays so far, I've done a recap on you know the auction listings that have ended in the previous week. Um, so that's a good opportunity to see how things are going. Uh, but also in the comment, I'm, I'm pinning the results so you can kind of quickly see, you know, where things are trending. So what we have today is kind of a different exercise. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a vehicle that there's really not anything wrong with it and there shouldn't be because it's nearly brand new. Uh, it's this uh, modified, hev not heavily, it's modified 2020 uh, 200 series Land Cruiser. It is the Heritage Edition. Um, so yeah, let's go through it. It's got five days left. It's currently bid up to 75000 which might feel like a lot, but for yeah these Heritage Editions, yeah, it's not really. Um, so I think the Heritage Edition was for the last two years that the 200 series was produced here in the United States. Uh, so for the model year 2020 and for the model year 2021, uh, it comes with a handful of, you know, Heritage Edition specific uh, things. Uh, the darkened headlights being one, the darkened grill, you know, a specific badge. Uh, I think they all came with like a Yakima rack on top of the factory rack. And then um, one of the things that's notably missing on this vehicle um, are some bronze, uh, you know, BBS, I don't know, style, whatever, uh, some bronze wheels that are Heritage Edition specific. So yeah, this one, it's got like nine, let's go over the details. So it's got uh, 8,000 miles. Um, it's, it's, looks like it's lived its life in a couple different places, according to the Carfax that we'll, we'll go over in here in a second. And it's got a handful of modifications. So let's, let's take some time and go through these. I think it's important to establish that, uh, you know, as far as figuring out what the values this, of this is going to be. So yeah, let's go through that. So it's, it's got these aftermarket method race wheels. I'd presume it's a beadlock. Uh, it's got an Icon vehicle to dynamics suspension. Uh, it's got Eaton uh, electronic locking front front and rear differentials. Uh, it's got this ARB bull bar in the front that's paint matched. So that's a little bit of an extra cost. It's got some ARB skid plates and then a winch and then some, some lights here. Uh, as far as other modif modifications go, it's got some vinyl wrap on these... Uh, side mirrors and then also on the on the roof and then it's got some like automated um, or power like steps um yeah so that's a pretty good summary of all the modifications on it um oh and it's got this ridiculous snorkel <laughs> uh, all right let's jump into the carfax let's see where this thing has spent its life did i miss the link maybe i did there it is all right oh and i've already got it open so let's just do that all right, so Carfax shows four owners. I think there was some discussion in the comments of the, the listing on Bring a Trailer that that wasn't totally accurate. Uh, yeah, whatever. But it's had you know four own owners according to this. Uh, it's lived in North Carolina. Mileage is consistent there. And then went to Texas. And then, let's see, to Montana and then to Utah. And that's where it's being sold, I think, out of southern Utah, if the rocks are any indication. Uh, looks like it's located in St. George, Utah, and it's got a, a clean Utah title. Before we go back to the listing, I made a video the other day about five tips to not get ripped off on Craigslist when you buy a car. Um, and one of those was to go to this website, vehiclehistory.com, uh, plug in the VIN and see, you know, what information, you know, can be gleaned, um, you know, just from the public domain and previous like sales listing. So when you put this Land Cruiser in, you end up getting four historical listings. So it's worthwhile to take a look at those, see what the history is and see what, you know, it was sold for in the past. So yeah, the, you want to go to the bottom of the list and then work your way up uh, in order to get the right chronological order. Uh, it looks like maybe brand new. This was MSRP'd at just under 91,000. Uh, it was sold, you know, 
or at least was listed at a North North Carolina, um, you know, 6,000 less than that. So that would have been the time to buy this thing. (laughs) And then let's see, not quite sure when this was, it might've been when it came out of Texas. Um, but Big price increase from May of 2020 through February of 2021. Presumably, that's what you know the individual, um, you know, that bought this, you know, paid. And it looks like in between, so likely the the seller in uh, Texas, you know, did all of the you know outfitting for it. Uh, it looks like maybe the wheels were lost at some point after this sell. And yeah, and it looks like just before this listing went on Bring a Trailer, they, uh, whoever's selling it out of St. George, was trying to get $119,000 out of it. So I think this is important. Do this if you're trying to buy a vehicle. It can give you some information, you know, that can be helpful and yeah, keep you from getting ripped off. Uh, it's also, you know, you can tell where the vehicle lived, you know, just if it has some sales listings. So that should be helpful as well. All right, coming to the photos, there's really like nothing wrong. Um, you know, the biggest thing, and we'll go through this, is that the undercarriage just looks totally trashed. You know, I've driven through this kind of mud. Uh, I think what you're seeing in this photo and in the photos that we'll go over represents an attempt at cleaning it off. It's a poor attempt. Um, the company that's selling this, this dealer, they are like an auto detailer. I'm surprised that they let this go. It's very clear from the photos that the wheel wells were cleaned up, but yeah, it didn't extend to the undercarriage. So kind of interesting. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, I'll just go through these photos while I have engage in a little story time. I remember as a kid, you know, we had a boat. We were lucky enough to have a boat. And, you know, after every time we went out, we were always, you know, like wiping down the boat, both on the ramp and when we got home, getting like all the water spots and vacuuming it and cleaning it all up. Yeah. It, I'm surprised. And I that same thing extended into my, you know, care of my Land Cruisers whenever I went on a trip and I got back. Yeah. Immediately it got detailed, got vacuumed, got cleaned up. I uh, just didn't like, you know, leaving it, you know, kind of a mess. Um, especially with sand, that sand can cause all sorts of issues, whether it's in the suspension components or on the front of the engine, it's just best to get that. Yeah. Get that out of there. Okay. So one of the first notable things I see again, we're looking at things that detract from brand new, beautiful, pristine mint condition. And we're missing this little cover for the trailer hitch. Maybe it's included. It's not mentioned. It's not there. Minor thing. But um, another thing to point out is that you can see right here, the spare tire does not match the the other four. Uh, I'd be surprised. And you know, if, if the if the wheel matches, maybe we'll get a glimpse of that. Actually, we, I, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, that's tacky. It, yeah. <laughs> Not the way to build it, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Moving through the rest of these photos, there's really like nothing wrong. It looks like it's in good shape. Uh, looks like it's, you know, been detailed. You know, it's, it's beautiful. Except the snorkel. I mean, the thing's so big. That's like the, like a snorkel max. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. It's a whole different world of people that'll take, you know, let's say a hundred thousand dollar vehicle into, you know, mud or water that in which a snorkel would be useful, but it's super cool for Instagram. That's what I've heard. All right. Moving through these blurry photos. Uh, you know, it looks nice. Well detailed. All the paint colors match. I haven't seen anything concerning in that regard. Uh, all the door panel gaps look good. Yeah. Really nothing to, nothing to say here. Yep. Clean, clean, clean. You know, I, a couple of things on the, on the front bumper here, it's good to see this little like trim or this welting. Um, yeah, it's a nice touch, you know, really finishes it off nice. All right. So yeah, moving to the undercarriage. Yeah. A little, you know, scratching here on the back bumper. Yeah. Nothing too crazy, but yeah, poor, poor detailed job here on the undercarriage. And yeah, that'll become very clear as we get into those photos later. A uh, couple minor blemishes in this uh, vinyl or paint protection film on this uh, the side mirror. But yeah, I mean like 
to the extent of you know damages and things that are wrong with this yeah that's pretty much it oh and there's one i think there's a detailed photo on the um uh, yeah this window trim yeah it looks like they applied some vinyl there to dechrome it and yeah that's peeling back a little bit all right so moving here to the wheels um you know one thing i kind of noticed especially compared to the rest of the undercarriage you can see some of the dirt and the the sand you know buried up here but it looks like these wheel wells got detailed pretty well um let's pay attention to this i'll bring this up a little bit later this is i think where the seat belt uh, attaches for the second row yeah, tires look new. And yeah, moving to the interior. Yeah, looks good. Like there's there's really nothing notable. Like very slight wear increases here. I, surprisingly, these Toyota seats like just don't wear well. Uh, saw some recent content online about uh, the newer Tundra and how, you know, if you're rolling off the seat to get out, yeah, this plastic can crack. I wouldn't be surprised. They have the same design flaw exists here, but you know, I don't know. It's got those autom fancy automatic steps, so you don't have to worry about that. Yep. Otherwise, looks good. Uh, not that photo. Looks like there's some switches for the lights, so that's nice that it's well integrated. And then you've got the switches here for the front and the rear locker. Looks like it's got automatic charging. Um, heated and ventilated seats, you know, all of the yeah, creature comforts that you'd expect for or from a 2020 Land Cruiser. Yep, all looks good. You know, some minor scratches and scuffs. Um, most notable was there on that center console and then also here on this back door. And then there's another big one kind of like in the back cargo area. Uh, yeah, so here's that, you know, it's nice here that there isn't uh, that third row. Um, that was like one of the coolest things I thought um, that came with or the ability to option with the, the Heritage Edition. Yeah, it's nice to just have a five-seater because so many people just don't use that. And, and really, like the Land Cruiser's not big enough for that third row to really be functional. So, All right, moving to the engine bay. A little like wiring mess. Um, I don't know, that's kind of what you have to do when you have all the lights and the electronic lockers. I will say the electronic lockers, I, it's refreshing to see that instead of the ARB. I've heard, yeah, not great things about the, the air lockers. I know some people swear by them, but yeah, no, not me. But I've also never had them. And you'll see a receipt further on. You know, it's a big chunk of change to pay for them. You know, it's upwards of, you know, five, six thousand dollars in order to get it done right. Yep, everything looks yeah, new and nice under here. All right, so moving to the undercarriage, you can start to see the extent of, you know, just where the mud got. Whether this went down like some muddy roads or if it was in kind of like a mud puddle, like this is very characteristic for, yeah, offered usage in this area of, of southwestern Utah. But they could have done a lot better job of getting this stuff off there. You know, just one of those little like rolly water sprayer things would have would have done yeah, would have done a lot to improve, you know, how this truck appears. And like there on the back of this wet dry, at the passenger side, you know, rear, you know, spindle and brake, that, that's a lot of mud. They really should have knocked that off. It's just not good for the, the components either to have that, you know, dirt and sand on them either. Um, but you can see here in the, you know, the wheel well, this would be then the driver's side. You know, they did a, and spent a lot of time cleaning this up, um, but you can, do, you can still see that there's yeah, quite a bit of sand and dirt back there. So this thing was used, yeah, pretty hard. All right, so the comment I had here, this is on the driver's side in the, um, you know, the wheel well in the rear. This is the seat or the bolt that holds the the seat belt, you know, kind of like anchor. So I believe this has been, that's, that's not necessarily true. It, it not having the same coating means possibly that either the coating got knocked off, maybe when they were pressure washing under here, or that that bolt had you know been out and removed for some reason it's probably just that it got uh, pressure washed off you know during the detailing process but not a big deal on something like this really not a big deal on another vehicle just something to keep in mind and and, and take note take note of 
All right, there's the VIN. Here's the receipt for the uh, front and rear lockers. You can see a total of yeah, almost 6000 well, $5,500. That's a lot of money. Yep, so there's the photos. Um, yeah, so as far as figuring out a value on this, you know, we saw that vehicle um, history report, you know, that they were hoping maybe to get 119000 out of it. Uh, this auction, I believe, yeah, does have a reserve. My guess is that it would be, you know, somewhere to, when remember, they, assuming that they bought it from this dealer out of Texas, they're likely into it, you know, like 105 ish thousand dollars. And I'd presume, actually, let's take a look at the receipt. So the reason to go through some detail here is that this is, you know, the going to inform the basis for the reserve. Uh, so this receipt was, let's see, what's the date? There's no date. Oh, there is a date. Yeah, so March of 2021. So let's see when that was done relative to this. So that was done right after likely these people from Utah picked it up. Um, so they've got tax on top of that. So, you know, like let's say six, seven thousand um, dollars. So they're like 107 plus another five for the lockers. Um, so that's what, 112. I mean, I can see why they're asking for 119 because they want to make a little bit of money off it after running it through, yeah, whatever they put it through. Um, so I bet they've got a reserve at like 110,000. That's kind of my guess. As far as what the actual value is, um, let's take a look at some of the historical listings uh, for these. Everything that you're seeing here at the top that's around $100,000, these are all heritage editions. Um, this one at, at 101, and we'll work backward in time, but this one sold for $101,000 um, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, and again, again you'd, you'd want to assume that these are all pretty low mileage, you know, like less than 20000 probably. Um, you've got another one that sold in December. Um, that was in a reserve for $114,000. Uh, you know, notice these are all like stock right? They're not modified. Um, you've got this 5,000 mile one that sold for 108,000. And then finally, um, this other one, 172 miles on it, and that sold for 117. So that would be the ceiling. They were asking just before listing this, they're asking 119,000. You may think, oh, well, it's got all these aftermarket things. You know, that's going to be a value adder. Well, not necessarily. So this particular one, this is a 2020 as well. Similar mileage, very similar modifications. Yeah, it sold for 97,000 just in September. So I, I would like to think, oh, one other point. I think the white looks better than the darker, you know, like vinyl wrap that they had on this, uh, this one that I'm hovering over, you know, something to look at, you know, and kind of compare and contrast if you're interested, you know, if you do have a money tree and you're planning on spending a hundred and hundred plus thousand dollars in this. <laughs> anyway, I, th I think it's going to go because it looks cool. I think it's going to go for what, like 110. Um, yeah. So he's, it's going to be like right there at the reserve. So, yep. That's my thought. I think the reserve is going to be at a hundred and yeah, 110,000. Cause that represents more or less what they've got in it. And yeah, it'll go to like one, I don't know, one eleven. There was somebody in the comments saying that, yeah, it's like 115 easy. I don't think it's getting into 115. Um, you know, especially compared, using this comparison here, you know, from this other, you know, sold example, um, you know, the tangibles or maybe some of the modifications like the lockers. I can't remember if this one has a locker or not. Um, you know, in the color, like those are the main like differentiators. It's got the same kind of, you know, front bumper and you know, whatever. So I would love for this to sell at a similar value, but it's, I mean, it's only got 25 grand to kind of close that gap. And I think it'll probably do it. So reserve at 110, final price, I don't know, like 112. But yeah, what do you think? Did you see anything wrong in the photos? I, I really didn't see anything. And yeah, I'm also curious what you think this thing will top out at. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll see you next time.